Your shirt can be with lapel without notch. So you can just decide to leave it like so and attach a flat collar or a round collar to your shirt. But when you add a notch to your collar, combination of notch and lapel is what makes this a notched collar shirt, which we all call a vintage shirt. In this video, I will be showing you how to make a vintage shirt. Going by the word vintage, this is any object such as clothing and jewelry that represents a previous era or social period, at least 40 years old but not older than 100 years. And in fashion designing, vintage is a term used to describe old clothing made between 40 and 100 years ago. So guys, today I will be teaching you how to cut and sew a shirt with a notch collar, which is one out of so many vintage shirts we have. Hi everyone, welcome back to a new tutorial and if you are new here, this is Reggie School of Fashion. On this platform, I upload fashion designing content regularly for both male and female using pattern drafting which is the world standard method in clothing construction. Consider subscribing to my channel so that you will receive regular updates for valuable content just like this. Are you guys ready? Let's go! In making a vintage shirt, a basic shirt pattern is needed. You can see I have my basic shirt pattern here, the front and the back, which I drafted out in one of my previous videos. If you don't know how to draft a basic shirt pattern, I have a well detailed tutorial on how to draft a basic shirt pattern, which has been linked up in the description box below this video so make sure you watch this video so that you won't get lost at any point of any of my tutorials because i make use of pattern drafting in all my tutorial that is why it is very important for you guys to watch this video so this is the back i'll be taking this aside for now and i'll work with the front panel so here i have my pattern paper this is my starting point at the edge of the pattern paper so this is the starting point then by this side i have the center front line i'm not using the edge of my paper as the center front line because i need extra inches by this side which i'll be using for creating the lapel the notch and the button extension okay so from the edge of my pattern paper to this point is three inches i measure three inches and I extended it downward. Okay, so this line will serve as the center front. And I will place the center front of my shirt pattern on this center front line. Okay, and I will also put my starting point into consideration. This is the highest point shoulder, the HPS. I'll make sure it falls exactly at that point, which is the starting point. And I will secure this with my tape. Now I have this, I have my pattern taped on the fresh pattern paper. And the next step is to transfer this shape on the fresh pattern paper. Okay. And I will stop at the hip level. I'm stopping at the hip level because this pattern is for a male native shirt. That is why I have the shape like so. Okay, so this is a corporate shirt that is a vintage shirt. So I will stop on the hip level and I will add the extra value to make it the full length of the shirt. So I will start by tracing out the neckline shape. I will trace out the shoulder line, the ham hole and the side of the pattern. So I've transferred this on the fresh pattern paper and I will remove the pattern. So 
So then I'll be tracing out my lines with my ruler. Now I've labeled my pattern appropriately and I traced out my lines. Here is the shoulder line, this is the neck line, this is the arm hole, the chest level, the waist level, the hip level, and the center front. As I said earlier, I will be stopping on the hip level. Now I will be inserting the shirt length measurement. Please note, when you are taking this measurement, it has to be taken from the HPS. That is the highest point shoulder, this point. So that is the neck width point. Okay, so this is the highest point we have on the shoulder line. That is why it is called HPS. So I will be inserting the shirt length measurements I'm working with, which is 30 inches. And because this is a corporate shirt, it will not be as long as a native shirt. So here is the shirt length and I will extend this outward, then label it appropriately. So the next step is to extend this point downward to the shirt length. And before doing this, I will be adding extra half of an inch on the hip level. Why? This is because it is a vintage shirt, a free shirt. There is no vent on both sides unlike that of native shirt. So we need to create room for ease around the shirt length. Okay, so that is why I will be adding extra half of an inch to this point. So that's the hip point. Then I will take the measurement all together and insert it on the shirt length. So here I have ten and one quarter. So that is 10.125. So please, if you don't know how to read your measuring tape, it is necessary you learn how to read your measuring tape. This is a starting point for every style you are making. If you can't read every values you come across on your measuring tape or point them out, this is going to create an issue for the type of style you are making. How do you read the small lines you have on your measuring tape? After dividing your values on your calculator, how do you get them on the measuring tape? So that is why I made a well detailed tutorial on how to read a measuring tape, most especially for pattern drafting. This is a pattern drafting tutorial class where you need to learn everything that has to do with pattern drafting. You have to learn how to read your measuring tape for pattern drafting. So the video has been linked up in the description box already. So make sure you watch this video after watching this particular one. So I will be connecting this point together like so with a straight ruler. Then I will be reconstructing the side as well. Okay, on the waist level, I will add extra half of an inch. So, connection from the waist to hip level requires a slight curve, not much curve anyway, but it is not meant to be on a straight line. So, I will take this up a little with my straight ruler. Then pick the point together with a slight curve. So with this, you will see the type of shape I will be having. So can you see what I have? It is a slight curve, not much curve. Okay, so then I will reconstruct this point. So I'll be connecting from the waist point back to the real chest level. On the chest level, I'm not adding extra inches. So, which I use this side of my curve ruler. This side looks, looks, looks straight, but it is not completely straight. So, make sure you watch my video on how to draft a male shirt pattern. Okay, so with this, you'll be able to draft any pattern whatsoever. Any style of shirt you are making, either senator wear, south, south, caftan, kuti. So, you'll be able to grade the pattern to your choice. 
Okay, so you can see I have the side constructed already. So this is for a corporate shirt. So the former line I have here, I will clean it up so that you guys don't get confused with it. So now I have my pattern ready for shirt. The pattern you are seeing right now is for shirt. So this is a shirt pattern. This will be also be graded to a notch collar shirt. Now, what type of collar are you attaching to your shirt? You can make a shirt with two-piece collar. You can make a shirt with round collar or flat collar. You can make a shirt with mandarin collar. You can make a shirt with bishop collar. You can make a shirt with Chinese collar. You can also make a shirt with short collar. So the type of collar you have on your shirt determines the name you called your shirt. And because this is a shirt pattern, I will further grade this to make a notch collar shirt pattern. Okay, so in doing this, the first thing is to extend the neck which I have here to the extension point. I will confirm the measurement from this point, the starting point to the neck depth. I'm confirming what I have over there. Here I have, I have two inches. Okay, so I will be inserting the exact two inches on this side. And I will extend this outward. Now, before drafting your collar, you have to decide how open you want that part to be. How much do you want the chest area to be? Okay, if you want it very open, so just put it in mind that you will add to the chest, to the uh, neck depth measurement you are working with. As I'm working with neck depth of 2 inches, these 2 inches will give me a very closed collar so the parts will not be opened at all it will be very close but the beauty of the notch collar will still come out but if you want yours to be very wide just add to this neck depth bring it down more you can add half of an inch to whatever you have already or 0.75 but for the sake of this tutorial i will be maintaining these two inches points so i extended this two inches point to get to the allowance part i have at the edge of my pattern paper. So the next step is to divide what I have here by two. I'm getting the midpoint. I'm using 1.5 inches as the button allowance, but I have three inches altogether because I will still be bringing out the notch collar out of this allowance. So I'm marking 1.5 inches now. So please note, this is from the center front on the neck depth point. 1.5 inches. Then I will extend it downward to the shirt length. So that is half of three inches I marked out. Okay, so this is the 1.5 inches point and I will label it as the button allowance. Button allowance. Now it's time to create the lapel. This is a crucial point in this tutorial. So you have to pay a closer attention. Also, I attached a piece of paper to my pattern so that I will have enough space at the upper part when I'm creating the collar. So when you're drafting your pattern, make sure you have enough space about four to five inches at the top before transferring your basic shirt pattern. So in creating the lapel, I'll come to the neck depth. Don't forget this is the center front. This is a button allowance line and this is the extra half of an inch. From this point to this point is three inches. From this point to this point is half of an inch. That is the midpoint of the three inches. I will be measuring three inches downward. Please take note, not from the center front, from the button allowance. That is the midpoint of three inches. From this point, I will measure three inches downward. Okay, I'm using three inches because it is a standard measurement. If you want your lapel to be longer than this, you can add to the three inches. You can make it 3.5 or four inches. But for moderacy's sake, three inches is good. 
Then I will be connecting the 3 inches point to the edge of the pattern on the neck depth. This is the neck depth line. So this point to this point using a straight ruler. Okay, so can you see what I have? So this is what I have for the lapel. So now the next step is to create the notch. Please take note of this. The notch part of this shirt is what makes it a notched collar shirt. Your shirt can be with lapel without notch. So you can just decide to leave it like so and attach a flat collar or a round collar to your shirt. But when you add a notch to your collar, combination of notch and lapel is what makes this a notched collar shirt, which we all call a vintage shirt. Okay, so in creating the notch, from the neck depth on the edge of the pattern paper here, I will come in by one inch. So please take notes. I'm taking the measurements from the edge of the pattern paper, not from the button allowance. The, the line I have at the midpoint is the button allowance line. That was why I labeled this as the button allowance. Okay, so I'm not taking the measurement from this midpoint. I'm not taking it from the center front. I'm taking it from the edge of the pattern paper. And the measurement is taken towards the side. Okay, so that is inward. Here is the one inch point, And I'll mark it out like so. Then from this same point, I will take it up. I will measure it up by one inch. Then this one inch point, I will move it forward by quarter of an inch. That is 0 0.25. I'm moving it away from the head of the pattern paper. This is the one inch point. This is the one quarter point I moved away from the head of the pattern paper. And this is the one inch point I measured from the head of the pattern paper on the neck depth inward. So I'm connecting from this one inch point to this one quarter point. Okay, so this is what I have for the notch. So this is a notch point. And this is the lapel. So the next step is to draft the collar. Okay, the next step is to draft the collar. The collar will be connected to the notch point. So in drafting the collar, I will come to the front neck width point. This is a front neck width point. The neck width point is the same thing as the HPS. So if you hear me saying HPS, I mean the neck width point. You can see this point is higher than the every other part of the shoulder line. That is why it is called HPS. So on this point, I will need to take the measurements of the back neck on my pattern. So make sure you take the measurement appropriately, right? So here I have 4 inches and 1 quarter. That is 4.25. So I'll note it down. 4.25. That is the measurement I have on the neckline of the back panel. Then from this point, I will measure this forward. So I will measure it forward from this point. Four inches and one quarter. So this is the point. Okay, then I will be connecting the point to the neck width point with a straight ruler. So here is the point. So you can see I have this as a straight line. 
I will not leave it like so because the neck is not on a straight line. I have to achieve a curvy effect just like the one I have for the front. Okay, so that there will not be issue when attaching the collar. And because of this, on this point, which is a measurement for the neck, I will measure 0.25 forward. This is taken towards the center front, okay, not towards the armhole. You have to take note of this. 0.25 towards the center front. So this is just to create a curvy effect around the neck. So this is the point. Then I'll be reconstructing this by connecting this point towards this line. So with this, I will have a curvy effect around the part, around this side rather. Okay, so this is what I have for the neck. Now, even me looking at this is no more on a straight line. You can see. So I'm marking this point so that it will be obvious where the neck measurement falls. So with this, I can erase this hop so that you guys don't get confused. So guys, if you have been getting value so far in this tutorial, make sure you like this video and let me know at the comment section. Now the next step is to insert the width of the collar. This is determined by how wide you want your collar to be. Your collar can be 2.5 inches wide, it can be 2.75 inches wide, and it can be 3 inches wide. You can even go as much as 4 to 4.5 inches. It all depends on how wide you want your collar to be. And for the sake of this tutorial, I will be using 4 inches for the width of the collar. So the measurement is taken from the neck measurement point. Don't forget this is a neck measurement point. The measurements are inserted from the neck width point of the front towards the side, which I later constructed to be a curved line. So from that point, I will measure the width of the collar, which is four inches. And the measurement is taken towards the center front. You can see the side is the center of the pattern. This is the side. The arm all falls at the side, so you are not taking it along the side, okay? So this is a 4 inches point. Then I will extend this forward. Making sure I have a perfect straight line. So this is where the 4 inches falls. Okay, so after getting this point, the next step is to connect this point to the notch point. As I said earlier, that I will be connecting the collar width point to the notch point. This is the notch point. So this will be connected to this. Now this also has to do with the shape you want your collar to have. If you want it flat, you use a straight ruler. You don't want it flat, you use a slightly curved ruler. So this is what I'll be using. I don't want my completely straight. Okay, so I'll be connecting these two points together like so. This it is just a slight curve. So guys, the collar is ready. The pattern is ready as well. So this is what I have for the collar. You can see this is the notch part of the shirt. This is the lapel. So this is the button allowance and this is the center front. So far so good, the pattern is ready. So this is all I have to do on the front pattern. And for the back pattern, So the back pattern remains the same except the side which I reconstructed. So I'll be achieving the same shape I have for the side of the front on the back as well. So this is all I need to do. Every other thing on this back panel, from the shoulder line downward remain the same, only the side, okay, only the side. That is what I need to do on the back panel. Now let me give you this as a bonus, okay, this is a bonus for you guys. The shirt length can be on a straight line if you want it straight like so. 
but if you don't want to be if you don't want yours to be on a straight line you can achieve a curvy effect around the shirt length okay so all you need to do is just measure about one inch upward from the center front So now I will be constructing this with a curve ruler. Okay, you can see what I have already for the shirt. You can feel the curvy effect. So you position your ruler the more you want the curve to be. Okay, if you want a very much curve, you use the curvy part of the ruler and you have it like so. If you want a slight curve, adjust your ruler. Use a part that is not too curvy. Okay, or better still, you can reduce the value you have here. You can decide to reduce this to half of an inch or quarter of an inch. So I will be shaping the two so that you guys can see the difference. So this is the half of an inch point. You can see this is different from showing you, I'm teaching you how to do this. Okay, so this is the half of an inch point. And if you want to make use of the one inch point, then we have something like this. Okay, so this is the one inch point curve and this is the half of an inch curve point. So then just take this and extend it outward to get to the button allowance point, which is here. Straight. So that's the button allowance. So this is the lower part of the shape. You can decide to leave it straight or apply this but the curve make it look more beautiful and that feel of vintage really come out when you apply the curve so far so good the pattern is ready and you will notice i did not have any seam allowance on this pattern you can decide to go ahead and add your seam allowance if you want it on the pattern but you will not be able to use it pattern for future purpose if you want to use your pattern for future purpose don't add your seam allowance Cut it out, add your same allowances on the fabric. So that is what I'll be doing right now. I'll cut out the pattern and add all my seam allowances on the fabric. So now it's time to cut out my pattern. Pay a closer attention. This is the color and I'll label it as the color. The color will be cut out separately and the bodies will be cut out separately. Not cutting the two together unlike when we are making a short color. This part I'm cutting is like the center front of the collar. So this will be on fold when cutting out the fabric. That was why I make sure I have a perfect straight line on that side. Okay, so this is where the collar stops. I'm tracing this out and I will stop on the notched point. This is a notched point. I'm stopping on that point. Then I will cut along the notched line. So please don't make a mistake when you are cutting out your pattern. Make sure you follow the shape you have around there. Okay, so this is what you make a vintage shirt. You can see the shape here already that it is really a notch. Notch like having a space in between something. So that is what notch is all about. Having a space in between. Okay, so this is part of the collar. The neckline is part of the collar so that is why i'm cutting along the front neckline okay so when we get to the sewing level you will understand better how this works how this will be attached the pocket the yoke is going to be a full tutorial okay so make sure you subscribe if you haven't so that you will receive notification anytime i drop this content So here is the collar. The collar is settled. So this will be trimmed off. And here is the lapel. So as you can see, the three inches is good already. If, this, if it is more than three inches, can you just imagine how long it will be? You can see the effect of the three inches. 
so i'm cutting this and stop on the midpoint of the three inches which is the 1.5 inches point so can you see the point then i'll continue trimming this hole after this point the remaining one and a half inches i have left by this side is no more needed okay so this is all i need for the one and a half can you see from here to here so that is what i need it for i'm trimming this off cutting on the 1.5 inches line which is the button allowance okay then i will cut on the shirt length i'm making use of the half of an inch curve now i'm back to the shoulder line i'm cutting on the shoulder line so with this pattern we still have a little effect of modern if you want this to be a complete vintage you are taking it straight down with a straight line from the chest level downward you have a straight line so it really looks like that of all those baba shades okay you have it straight and it's going to be as wide as anything straight down so this is a complete vintage shirt now it's time to grade the back panel so that it will have the same shape with the front panel as i said earlier from the shoulder line to the chest level from the shoulder line to the chest level remain the same i'm not working on that part so this concentration will be by the side of the pattern so here is the center back of the pattern and this side is the side of the pattern you can decide to add extra paper together with your pattern like so or transfer your panel the back panel on a fresh pattern paper then do the grading by the side okay so i will place the front panel on the back panel this is the center of the front this line is the center front and not this you are not placing the button allowance line on the center of the back so that you will not have extra inches added to your pattern this is the center front the center of the front on the center of the back and also this is the shoulder line for the front okay and if you are wondering how i have this line on my back panel if you watch my video on how to draft a male native shirt pattern you will get to understand better the back panel is longer than the front panel so this line is for the front panel and now we align the shoulder line to fall on that point making sure the edges align like so with this automatically this will fall on the center front okay you can see what i have here this is the center of the front then i will secure this with my tape now i have my pattern secure with paper tape then i will go ahead and trace out the side of the front panel the front panel is on the back panel the back panel is underneath the front panel so i'm tracing out the shape i have on the front panel like so so that it will be the same thing with that of the back so that is what i'm doing right now and that is the only thing i have to do on the back panel the side and the shirt length that is the shape i have on the shirt length i'm also extending this point outward okay so i'm done with this i can remove the front panel trace out my lines and cut out the back so guys this is the point i will be drawing the cutting for this video let's meet in my next video where i'll be showing you how to construct a vintage shirt the shirt is going to be with back yoke front pocket and a notch collar remember to like this video so that youtube algorithm can like it too and show it to more people like you till we meet in my next video 
Always do remember, there is no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs.